During medical school, I became very sick with severe GI pain. Week after week, I pushed through it. I kept telling myself I would rather die than drop out of medical school to seek medical attention. 12 hours after taking my last final exam, a massive ovarian cyst ruptured, sending me into sepsis with organ failure. Through a divine series of miracles, I was able to get emergency surgery and God allowed me to live. Prior to surgery, I was having issues with severe fatigue, muscle pain, muscle spasms, and my heart would race when I stood up. I never sought medical evaluation because I was assured I was healthy and nothing was wrong with me. However, after having surgery, my health could no longer be ignored. Every time I stood up, I felt as though I was going to pass out. I had a hard time walking because I became very fatigued very quickly. I was short of breath and my muscles ached. I was told by my doctors I was just recovering from surgery. There was nothing wrong. When school resumed from winter break, I went back to class. Three months after having surgery, I again was in the midst of my studies when I became severely ill, this time with pneumonia. My health deteriorated even more. Suddenly, I found myself begging doctors for help. I visited a primary care provider. She was very concerned about my symptoms. She referred me on to a pulmonologist. The pulmonologist ordered lung function tests and a six minute walk test. During the six minute walk test, I had to repeatedly stop and catch my breath. When I was done with the test, I collapsed into a chair from exhaustion. During the lung function test, I passed out three times when trying to perform the various tests. The technician was extremely concerned. No one had ever passed out on him before while doing the test. Moreover, during the testing, the technician asked if I was a heavy smoker. I said no. The technician said the results showed I had severe respiratory impairment similar to someone with severe COPD. My lab values were very poor. When I saw the pulmonologist, she reviewed the results. When she saw the low lab values, which indicated I had severe respiratory issues, she immediately snapped at me and said, I did not give my best effort. I faked the results. Moreover, these test results showed I'm an illicit drug user. My drug problem was causing all my health issues. Although I had told the doctor I stay in bed for most of the day, due to severe fatigue and shortness of breath. The physician dictated in her notes that I go out all the time with friends and party. This interaction with the doctor crushed me. I sought medical treatment at other medical facilities, but I never returned back to this doctor. I go from doctor to doctor, but no one has any answers. Furthermore, I'm often accused of causing my health issues. Another interaction with a doctor goes as follows. I sit in a doctor's office. 45 minutes after I arrive, the doctor strolls into the room. The doctor asks why I'm here. I tell the doctor I'm having chest pain. My heart feels like it's racing out of control. My heart rate and blood pressure have been elevated. I am extremely exhausted. The doctor looks at my vitals, which were taken after I'd been sitting for 30 minutes. The nurse recorded my heart rate as being 145 beats per minute. For reference, a heart rate of 145 beats per minute is equivalent to an intense cardiovascular workout. My blood pressure is 160 over 80. When the doctor sees my heart rate, he tells me I intentionally elevated my heart rate. I ran all the way from the back of the parking lot, through the building, and up a flight of stairs. I then had my heart rate taken. I tell the doctor if that was true, which it is not, a person's heart rate decreases upon sitting. I arrived 45 minutes ago. He is free to check the front desk log to see when I checked in for my appointment. My scheduled appointment time was 40 minutes ago. The doctor waves off my concerns. He tells me there is nothing wrong. I am faking everything. 
I beg the doctor for help. I tell him to check my heart rate. Now, after sitting and talking for five minutes, even if I did try to intentionally elevate my heart rate, after five minutes of sitting, my heart rate should be normal. My heart rate is checked. It is still 145 beats per minute. The doctor tells me I am fine. I am making up my elevated heart rate. The doctor sends me home and tells me I am faking all my symptoms. In a search to find answers to my medical worries, I saw a doctor who was located an hour away from me. Hello doctor, I am having a lot of chest pain. I am also short of breath and very fatigued. Yes, that sounds very concerning. I think you should wear a heart monitor and that will show us if anything is wrong with your heart. Okay, sounds good. Here is some paperwork. Take it with you to the laboratory and they will give you a heart monitor. Okay, thank you. I go to another office and find the laboratory assistant. I am given a heart monitor and told to come back in two to five days to return the heart monitor. Okay, it is time to get up for the day. I always hate this time of the day because my heart just seems to race out of control. So here we go. As soon as I stand up, my heart races very quickly. Whew. Oh, I think I'm going to stay in bed all day. My heart is racing very quickly and I'm very, very exhausted. Okay. Whew. Three days later, I travel over an hour to return the heart monitor back to the clinic. Two weeks later, I have my follow-up appointment. I have here the results of your heart monitor. What were you doing at 8.30 in the morning? Your heart rate was extremely high. I got out of bed. Where is your journal? My journal? What are you talking about? You were supposed to keep a journal of everything you did. I did not know that, but I can tell you what I did. At 8.30, I got up. At 9 a.m., I went to bed for the rest of the day. Without a journal, these results are worthless. I have no record of what you were doing. I can tell you what I did. I got out of bed at 8.30 and then at 9 a.m. I went back to bed. It is the same routine I do every day. No, I need a journal of what you were doing. Come back in a month. Well... Let's do the heart monitor again. I will keep a journal this time. No, we tried that. It did not work. Come back in a month. I left the doctor's office and never returned back. This cycle of seeing doctors who did not know what was wrong with me continued. Finally, doctor number 86 tested my heart rate while lying down sitting and standing. Based on the results, he suspected I might have the medical condition called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. He referred me on to a cardiologist. Hello doctor, I am having a lot of chest pain. I am also very short of breath and very fatigued. My heart races whenever I stand up. That sounds very concerning. It seems as though you may have a medical condition called postural 
Orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, we often abbreviate it as POTS. Have you ever heard of this condition? No. To test for POTS, I am going to put in an order for you to wear a heart monitor for 24 hours. That should give me a good idea of what your heart is doing. Do I need to keep a journal? Oh, no. If you have POTS, I should be able to see it by looking at your heart rate. Whenever you stand up, your heart rate should go up, and I should see that on the heart rate monitor. I go home with the heart monitor. Two days later, I return the monitor and have a follow-up appointment. Here are the test results from your heart rate monitor. Let's take a look at them. You must have gotten up about 8.30 because look, your heart rate is nice and even at 55 beats per minute. This is all during the night. It's very healthy and beating at a constant rate. And then 8.30, bam, your heart rate skyrockets to 175 beats per minute. It then goes back down. It looks like you must have laid down. And then all through the day, whenever you get up, it skyrockets high and then you lay down and it goes back down. I think you definitely have POTS. I'm going to put in an order for you to be fitted with compression stockings. Let's start with compression stockings and go from there. I am thinking we should follow up in about a month. Would following up in a month be good with you? Or do you think you need to be seen sooner? Following up in a month is good with me. Okay, great. I will see you in a month. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. Take care. I am very grateful for Dr. Number 86 who suspected I might have POTS. If I had not been referred on to the cardiologist, doctor number 87, I might still be searching for a diagnosis. My heart breaks and tears often run down my cheeks when I read about all the challenges people face when trying to find out what is wrong with them. Never give up. It may take over 80 doctors to get a diagnosis, but one day a diagnosis will be found. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.